Recently, we added this new animation to the Magic Missile spell in DM Hub. As you can see, when you cast a spell, a number of missiles go flying towards the target. You might also notice that an effect gets played on the caster as well as on the target of the spell. A number of people have asked me how this effect can be achieved and how they can add something similar to other spells, so that's what I'm going to show you today. Like anything in DM Hub, we aim to make this uh, adaptable and extendable so you can, you can use the same techniques on your own spells. So I'm going to let you have one more look at, at this spell. I'm going to give myself some level 1 spell slots so we can cast it at level 1. You'll notice that when I'm preparing to cast the spell, this, this uh, effect plays on the caster. Uh, and this is effectively a video. Uh, it uses our emote system, which lets you play little videos on characters. This little lantern he's carrying is, is another example of that. And you'll notice that when he casts the spell, uh, it plays a little effect on him. Uh, it finishes, see how it finishes, and then the three missiles go flying, and then an effect, which is another emote, is played on the target. So the emotes are what I'm going to talk about first, because they're the simpler part of the system. Uh, and the way that they work is if you go to the compendium, we have this new section for spellcasting emotes. And you'll see that so far we've only populated it with our, our magic missile emotes. Uh, and you'll see here, this is, the, this is the video that we've uploaded that our artist Vel and uh, did, which, uh, which is, has, has the three missiles uh, rotating around the, the caster. Um, and then you'll see that we've set it up so it has this finish field, which is you can choose any of the other emotes from here as a finish field, um, but you'll see that it's set to, uh, to the cast magic missile. And what that means is if we look at cast magic missile, we'll note that this emote should be a looping emote because you want it to play continuously. Cast Magic Missile is like its partner, which just, it just, um, it's, it's a single play. Uh, and something important about it is that um, Velen has made it so the first frame of this animation syncs up exactly with the last frame of this looping animation. And the last frame, we call that the loop point because it's sort of a special point in the, in the animation. Uh, and and where it can transition to this animation. So uh, so because this finishes with the cast magic missile, what that means is when we stop this video from playing, instead of it just disappearing, we'll wait until it finishes, until it gets to the loop point, and then we'll transition to the cast magic missile. And that lets us that lets us have this uh, cool thing. And and this preview doesn't show it, but when you cast a spell, you notice that it's really nice that it goes smoothly. From um, from it going around the caster to it just playing the um, the effect, and then we also have another uh, emote which is this impact mi magic missile, which is played uh, when the character is actually hit by the magic missile. So, if we go to our uh, our magic missile uh, spell, uh, we'll see that in the uh, we have over here we have some things which let you control the appearance of the spell. And you'll see this cast effect lets you choose from those emotes that we saw. Uh, and then there's the impact effect, which again lets you lets you choose. Um, and then we, we also have some basic effects that play for, like if you don't set an effect, you can set it to the school effect, which we're trying to get one effect for every school. So if you're casting an evocation spell, but you don't have a, uh, an effect for it, it'll at least show a generic evocation casting emote. Um, and so that's how that's how all that works. Uh, it's uh, so you can see that's that's pretty simple to set up. Uh, the the main trick is getting the actual um, nice looking videos. Uh, so now we're going to talk about this third field, the projectile, because that uses a very different uh, system. Um, it uses our object system, and I want to demonstrate to you that if we cast magic missile, you'll see that every time we cast it, the three objects are different in the way they, they fire. So we saw they went that way that time. Um, this time you'll see that they had a more diverse path. So they're random uh, in, in how they work. And likewise, uh, I, I set us up with a level 20 spellcaster, so he can cast and he can upcast uh, to level 9, which means that he gets a lot of magic missiles. And we'll see that 
uh, it it generates that. It generates all of the all of the missiles going at the at the target. Uh, and so I'm I'm going to show you how to do that. So in our object section, um, you'll see that we have this new special projectiles folder. And the projectiles folder contains all the projectiles that will be displayed in that menu that we saw, the, uh, the, the spell casting menu here. So you'll see that magic missile is the only one right now because it's the only object in the projectile folder. So we're going to create a new, a new object that's suitable uh, for use of the projectile um, to show you how that all works. Uh, and so I'm actually just going to use the same, the same image as we've just been using. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna build it from scratch. Uh, I'll note that you can choose you can choose the video here if you want. Um, and uh, so maybe you have a fire that's burning would be a, a, a cool example or something you might you might. Um, so we'll call this um, magic missile version two. And uh, and now what we can do is we can go to our uh, our, our spell, and we can choose for magic missile to use this. Um, and if we do this, it won't it won't look very interesting. It'll just um, fly straight across the screen, and you'll see it's not even oriented correctly. Uh, so usually, when I when I want to edit objects, usually I put sort of one of the objects on the map, and I edit it, and then when I'm ready to uh, I'm happy with the changes. I use save changes to blueprint to save it back to the blueprint over here. So every time we create one, we can use it. Um, so, uh, so firstly, it's not oriented correctly because uh, the system expects a, a missile, a projectile to be facing upwards. Um, so to orient it correctly, we just have to rotate it 90 degrees and now it's, uh, it's facing correctly. So if we change the, uh, save the changes to the blueprint and we'll just put this guy up here so uh, we can use him more in a minute. Um, if we cast this now, um, you'll see it flies and it's oriented correctly. Um, and you'll see there's only one missile. Uh, well, there appears to be one missile. There's actually, um, um, it, it shoots all of them, but they're on top of each other because uh, they have exactly the same behavior. So there, uh, there appears to be only one. Um, so let's let's show you how to make uh, how to make it look a little bit more interesting. Even though I will say that for some spells that might be adequate. Uh, if you want a pr simple projectile that flies straight at the target, especially if you made it a video instead of a static image, it might already be interesting enough. Um, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, is this property you can add to object called the appearance property. Uh, and we've had this around for a while, um, but this is sort of a good opportunity to, to sort of show a few little things it can do. Um, so, for instance, if we wanted to, to use this for Eldritch Blast, and we decided that Eldritch Blast could be, it should be purple, we can shift the hue on the object uh, to, to make it look different. We don't need new art, we, just, we, can, we can use the appearance property, and we can, we can change the color. Uh, and then we can also play with the saturation, um, the brightness. Uh, we could make it uh, a little bit transparent if we wanted. I will note that when you click on the object, it kind of highlights it, and that that obscures a little bit the what it looks like. So you kind of have to click off it to tell. Uh, something something else we have is we have what's called additive blend, and that means that normally when objects are drawn, they sort of um, are blended with what's with the the map. Additive means that you it it only increases the colors. It doesn't uh, it doesn't like blend them. Um, this is this is a thing you can do in painting programs like Photoshop. They have a whole lot of blend modes. Um, and so we allow additive blending, and it'll make something look more like a ghostly light if you do additive blend, which is often exactly what you want for uh, a missile like this. Um, so we can, uh, if we save the changes, um, we'll see that uh, it will now um, it'll now it'll now fire this purple projectile. Um, probably also you would want to make the uh, make the projectile a little bit smaller. Uh, clicked off there. Uh, it's a little, it's a little big. Um, so if we save those changes, um, uh, it, it, it'll look a little bit more of an appropriate. Okay, I'm, I'm sure you're waiting for the really good stuff. 
um, which is how we do those weird how how, how the missiles can fly in three different missiles. Um, and the way that you do that is by adding a path animation property. And a path animation property, uh, we've had this for a while, and it allows you to make, say, like birds or butterflies that fly around. Um, but it also has some special, uh, when it's used with something that's used as a missile, it adds a whole lot of um, new little features that I'm going to, I'm going to show you how they work. So what you can do is, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, and you can get this, this guy, and you can decide that you're going to set a path on him. Um, so you you set a path and you you draw your path and let's draw our path like that say um, and so you'll see you'll see that the missile flies in this path and we can choose here you can choose if you want the move type to be by duration which means this will always take eight seconds no matter how long the path is usually for missiles you probably want it to go based on speed. And you can choose a, how how fast it goes, um, and we can choose whatever speed we want for our missile. Um, you'll also see that the it does rotate to sort of face the way that we've drawn the path, um, but you you can set a rotation speed to see how quickly it rotates. So you, so here we've set it since we have a pretty windy path, we want to set the rotation speed pretty high. Um, so now that we've done that. Um, what we can do is we can, uh, a little trick is that now that we have this guy, he's flying around like crazy, so it's hard to click on him. You can press F6 and it halts all animations like this. And we can save changes to blueprint. And now we can, uh, we can do our magic missile. Um, and when we do it, we'll see that it flies along the path. Um, and, uh, you'll, you'll see that because there's, it, it just flies along the path, but all the missiles again, same path. So it still looks like there's only one missile. So what we can do is we can get um, get this, and we can add some more paths. Um, and so I'm going to add a path like this. And you should note that you can you can choose any. You might say like. How does this work? Like, like why are you dragging it to there? And you can actually you can actually drag to any point you want. You can decide any point you want to be the destination, and DM Hub kind of like works it out. Like it does a it does a mapping of this destination. It like remaps it to what whatever the actual target is um, that you that you set. Uh, and so if we do something like this. Uh, then, and what you probably want to do is set this random merge. And if you set random merge, what happens is this object, it makes up new paths that are kind of based on the paths that you drew. So you can see that it's sort of like making up different, different paths as it goes. Um, and we'll see now that when we fire the, the magic missile, um, Oh, uh, I I forgot to I forgot to save the changes to the blueprint. I was I was a bit uh, confused why that didn't work. Um, but uh, we will cast it. Um, I'm cast up casting at several levels, and you can see that we now get multiple uh, multiple missiles flying out. Um, and I will note that you can uh, you can sort of um, I'm going to delete these paths to show a different example. Um, so, oh gosh, that's a little error. I will look at that later. Um, uh, so, um, you can set paths, um, and, uh, you, you might want to just choose a, a pretty mundane path. Like, you might just want, for some missiles, like, maybe even most missiles, like, we probably don't want them to, to be too, like, weird so you might just set like a few very very basic little paths like this also noting that most projectiles um don't have uh don't have um multiple multiple missiles like magic missile does uh like something like fireball just has one one projectile um so you might you might just want something you might just want something like this um that might be that might be enough for you um, and so if you do something like that, you'll see that, um, our, uh, oh, uh, once again, I forgot to save the changes to the blueprint. Um, 
and we'll go back to having some spell slots. Uh, so you'll see there that we have a relatively mundane spell paths. Um, but on the other hand, you can do some really crazy things if you want. Um, like you could set it so that uh, you could set something where it actually goes in full loops and goes around the back of the, to the target. Um, and that would that would also look just fine. I'm not going to forget to save the changes. Um, and so if we cast this, we'll see it uh, has some has some pretty uh, pretty pretty weird effects um, like that. Um, the final thing I'll say is that uh, is that you might say, well, like a, a missile can have pretty different behavior if the target is close to if the target's really far away. And the system recognizes that. So if you set some paths that are like close by, um, the and then you set some paths that are like really long paths, when you shoot at a target, uh, there's a kind of intelligent system so that it will work out how far away the target is and try to base the path on, on paths that have a similar distance to to the 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 targets um the targets distance um so you can um you, you can uh um take advantage of that you you can draw draw paths of different length um if you want different behavior um and so uh if you want to test your missiles out uh we have this projectile test button and if you use this what you, it'll do is it'll actually show you uh, if you move, uh, you'll see that it's shooting the missile. When I move the mouse, it starts planning out paths to this, um, to here, and you can see what your missile will actually look like um, if it's shot at different potential targets. Uh, so this is, um, you can see that you can sort of rapidly see exactly what, uh, what it will look like in practice. Um, so this should hopefully give you a good overview of how you can use our uh, our new spell effect system. Um, I will say this is only the start of what we're planning to do with spell effects. We're planning for uh, a lot more different things. We're going to eventually add particle systems uh, and the ability to do area of effect type things like nice looking spheres and cones and uh, and all of that stuff. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see uh, see your own effects in the game shortly.